Hey guys, welcome back to Buddy RC. My name is Clay, and today I'm very happy to announce that uh, we have got a M7 just about built here. Um, so I wanted to go through a few things that I found just while building the kit, some very innovative features on this helicopter that I haven't really seen on that many other helicopters. Um, I haven't built a 700 in a very long time, so bear with me if this is something that's you know pretty standard practice, but um, I'm pretty excited about these features on the M7 because like I said, there's a lot of innovative features on this helicopter. Um, so the first thing that I saw, of course, is the look of the lower frame. I absolutely love this molded carbon. The molded carbon on the frame not only saves weight, but it gives you more rigidity than just regular two millimeter carbon fiber. Also built into that is your battery tray sliders. Um, so your battery just slides right in. There's no need for more hardware or anything like that. So it's a very minimalistic, uh, design because you have a lot less screws than you would. You don't have all these, you know, strengthening areas where you have to put this and this. It's just really strong as it sits and very light. Um, so of course the molded frames are not only for looks, but they are very functional. So as you guys can see, we're actually going to be running the 45, 30, 518 KV sunny sky motor in that beautiful yellow color. Um, which I'll post a close-up of because this thing is gorgeous. So on the cyclic, we're running the KST 2208s, and then on the tail, we're running the 1035s. Um, so I don't have my V-bar put on this right now. Uh, I just haven't had the chance to. I finally got this finished today, um, and I saw a few things in this that are just really neat. Um, things like on the side frame here, uh, I'll get close-ups of all of this in this video as well, um, but the side frame, being able to run your uh, actual wires through that and keep it away without having a whole bunch of zip ties down the side of your model, it is awesome. Um, there's also the nice little access hole on the side so you can put the wires through there, not have to worry about them getting tangled up in your main gear, um, and also not getting tangled up in your cyclic servos. So after uh, you know getting everything built and running the wires through here, like I just said, um, I, the head is one thing that I really want to talk about. So you have these little fittings on the side. They're just like a two millimeter sized um, bolt, but basically you pull those out and you have access to put grease on your thrust bearings. Um, I'm one person that loves to, you know, make sure everything's good to go. So I actually carry a pin oiler in my kit and I pin oiler, uh, I'm sorry, I pin oil the main shaft, the tail shaft, and I always hit in between the grips um, just to make sure everything is happy and moving. Um, and also I do the mixer arms as well, just to make it a little nicer to, uh, you know, it, it won't run out of any lubrication or anything like that. Um, but on the head though, talking about that, I not only love those grease fittings there, um, but the arms, the arms that come with the kit. This is actually kind of neat. I've never seen a kit do this before. So there's actually two style of arms. There's a, like a 3D arm, which is gonna give you the most throw out of this thing possible. And then there's the shorter arms that will basically be good for like F3C and F3N style flying, which is kind of how I like to fly. Um, so that's nice that you have that option in the kit. So if you want to fly wild 3D, you have arms. If you want to fly like F3C style flying, you have arms. Um, so that is a really neat feature of this kit. Um, also with the head, I see in the center of the feathering shaft, there is a bearing. Um, basically, it keeps the feathering shaft from moving up, down, left, right, and it only moves with each blade. So each blade will be connected. You won't ever have to worry about it going out of, uh, you know, tracking or anything like that. So it's a really neat feature. Uh, everything is super beefy in this, insanely beefy um, main shaft, insanely beefy feathering shaft. Um, and like I said, the fit and finish of everything, even with this being a pre-production kit, is absolutely amazing. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the side plates are gorgeous. The tail is gorgeous, uh, which we'll go to here in just a second. But I just really wanted to talk about the head and of course the servo and servo wire placement. It's a really well thought out design. It's not just two plates with two plates on bottom and a couple of holes in the side of it. So you just, you know, tape your wires to the side, or I'm sorry. So you could just zip tie your wires to the side. It's a very well thought out helicopter. Um, so also with the frame, I'm gonna move this to the side here. Let's try not to knock it off. Also coming with the frame is, uh, or coming back from the frame, 
uh, there is the tensioner right here. I think this design is such a cool design because um, I absolutely hate pulling tail booms, pushing tail booms, especially on a helicopter this big. M4s, it's it's all right. It's not that bad to pull a little tiny you know boom, but when you get something this big, it is so much easier to you know just set it at a medium rate, not too tight, not too loose. Um, and then of course you could just feel the actual, you know, tension and then just turn your tensioner right here. Um, it's super simple. It's a really easy thing to put together. It's not that hard. Um, I wish more companies did that. That is right there. One of my favorite features of the helicopter, because if you, you know, your belts tend to loosen up over time. That's just how it is. They get worn out and you can just boop, 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 tighten it up. So it's a really neat feature on the frame. So another neat feature on this helicopter is the battery tray locking system. So when you go to pull it out, you just flip it out and it's good to go. Um, but the really cool part is when you put it in. So I'll have a video of this, of course, but you can actually just click it right in. And as soon as you push it, it will click right in. Super nice and they're really well made. So they're not gonna just snap right off. Um, if you put it in wrong or accidentally go too far and have it hit. Um, there are little metal rods in there, so they're not plastic. It's not something that's gonna shear right off. Um, but let's make it back to the tail and uh, we'll talk about a few neat features on that. So as I said before, um, I don't have a fly barless unit on this yet. I have a V-bar for it, which is what I'll be running. Um, and uh, there's some neat things back here before we make it all the way back to the actual tail box. Uh, so the mount for the tail, um, actually has this neat feature on it where it actually has a damper built right into the top where your fly bonus unit will sit. Um, so it has these little rubber feet and then underneath the, the frame, I'm sorry, underneath this uh, piece right here, there's actually a weight. And what that does is basically isolates the fly bonus unit from the actual helicopter itself. So you won't have to worry about, you know, weird shakes or vibrations. If say if a fan or something like that is out on your ESC, and it's making a little bit of weird noise, it won't affect your fly wireless unit because your helicopter itself will uh, basically be isolated from the fly wireless unit. So that's a really neat design, I think, personally. Um, also, I love the concealed um, tail servo back here. I think that is awesome. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, again, I'll get close-ups of everything. Uh, the, the concealed tail servo I think is awesome. Um, it's super easy to put in there. It's not that hard at all. Um, and then it's got the nice big push rod on it that won't bend on you while you're flying real hard with tail uh, happy maneuvers. Like res reversals and things like that are normally pretty hard on uh, push rods. So it's nice to see a really thick push rod for that tail. So coming back to the tail here, uh, there's some really neat features back here that are carried from the M4 Max over to this helicopter. So I absolutely love the design of the tail box, how it just continues off of the carbon. Um, so it's a really sleek design. It doesn't come up and out or anything like that. It's just really smooth transition. Uh, of course, you have your idler um, right here for the actual belt. So it will tension the belt over top of the gear. So technically speaking, it should not ever slip. Um, that doesn't mean run it super loose. Uh, just it's really nice. So you can run high head speed, low head speed, and not have to worry about that being messed up at all. The tail back here, of course, uh, you have those dynamic weights on the tail, just like the M4 Max, um, and it will give you the same amazing uh, tail performance that you get out of the M4 Max just on a 700. Other things on the tail, so you do get optional stickers with the tail, so you don't have to run them if you don't want to. You wanna just run the straight carbon, you can. And of course, you have another huge shaft back here for the tail rotor. Um, shaft. It really is a beefy helicopter. It's made to just keep on going. Um, so it, I think for competitions, this thing is going to be awesome because it's really easy to work on. If you do crash it, uh, everything is really accessible. That is one thing I hate about some helicopters where stuff isn't accessible. Um, this has got holes where, you know, if you need to get to something and you don't want to take something all the way apart, super simple to do that. Um, so that is one thing I love about this helicopter is just the simplicity of it. It is not over engineered. It's not something that, you know, if you need to get to the back servo, you don't need to take the side frames off. You don't need to take a whole bunch of stuff off. You need to take four bolts off, push it through, take it out and you're done. You're ready to go. Um, it's super simple. Like I said, well thought out. Um, and I absolutely love it and I cannot wait to fly it. 
Uh, a flight video will be coming. Uh, it's taking us a little longer because I just haven't had the time personally, unfortunately. Um, but at least we have the ESC ready to go with soldered up plugs. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, the M7 I am insanely excited for. I have been waiting for OMP to come out with a 700. Um, this has been in the works for a very long time. Uh, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. I love this gold color. Uh, I kind of thought about throwing on the blue tailbone. You guys let me know what you think. Uh, it's nice that it comes with both in the kit. Um, so you have that option to do whichever one you want. Um, like I said, I think this thing is going to do really well. I absolutely love the innovation that's on this helicopter. Um, it's different. It's not like every single one out there. It's not a copy of anything. It is just a lot of new innovative stuff. Um, like I said, that the tensioner, that's probably my favorite feature of this helicopter um, because I, again, hate tensioning tail booms and things like that. So that is a really cool feature on this guy. Um, and again, if you guys have any questions about the M7, please post them down below. Um, hopefully we're going to be getting hit, uh, kits here pretty soon. So guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm going to go throw a V-bar on this thing. see on the next one. I'm gonna go put a V-bot on this thing. It's too big!